I wanted to say thanks to all of you for getting me to 3,000 subscribers. As promised, for every thousand subs I hit, I add another ship to my fleet. Eventually, it'd be amazing to have dozens of them, but for right now, I just wanted to say thanks. How many assholes we got on this ship anyhow? Yo! I knew it, I'm surrounded by assholes. Now, on to today's topic, the tenure of Kathleen Kennedy as head of Lucasfilm these past several years has been a bit... rocky. That's the understatement of the year. It seems that at some point there was a conscious decision made by the management of Lucasfilm to abandon the established fan base of a franchise worth multiple billions of dollars in favor of new fans. Are you brain dead? It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. And while I can respect the desire to broaden one's appeal to the normies, the division Disney sowed within the fandom since acquiring Star Wars is toxic. Disney and the media assert that the source of this toxicity is the fandom. You don't have any friends. Nobody likes you. Not listening. Not listening. We argue and debate, but that's what geek culture is. To those of us who didn't simply watch an episode of The Big Bang Theory and decide to be a geek as a fashion choice, we understand that this debate is healthy and fun. And in fact, it's what kept Star Wars alive for decades when we weren't getting much content. But since Disney took over, the feel of it has changed. I'd contend the source of the worst toxicity has been Disney itself, who pumps out mediocre bullshit and then deflects criticism to unhappy fans using media smear campaigns. <laughs> this is why so many of us have been calling for Kathleen Kennedy to be fired. As you know, she recently renewed her contract for a few more years at Lucasfilm. There's been a lot of talk that she's little more than a figurehead these days. While I can't confirm this one way or another, in this video, I am going to show you a discouraging article which indicates that Darth Kennedy is still the head honcho. Who run Barter Town? We're also going to look at evidence from the set of Mando Season 3, which indicates that it is tying together the Mandalorian universe with the Kathleen Kennedy sequel trilogy. Unfortunately, as of right now, all roads lead to Rey and Kylo. If you're suffering as much as I am, please tell me. We'll end the video talking about what this means for Star Wars and Disney, and as usual, I'll want to hear your thoughts in the comments. Saddle up, me hearties, and steal your nerves, because the news today will have you going... I have contained my rage for as long as possible, but I shall unleash my fury upon you like the crashing of a thousand waves! We're going to take a quick look at this article from Entertainment Weekly talking about the upcoming Obi-Wan Kenobi show and the production of it, which gives us the sense that Kennedy is still the top dog calling all the shots at Lucasfilm these days. Mind you, you don't have to agree with this, you don't have to disagree, we just need to talk about it. It's a long article, but we're going to take a look at the middle of it where it reads, And then Solo happened. Released in May of 2018, the somewhat awkwardly titled Solo, a Star Wars story, garnered a worldwide box office haul of $393 million, a far cry from the $1.33 billion brought in by 2017's The Last Jedi, and over 60% less than the first standalone Star Wars film, Rogue One, which tallied more than $1 billion. 
Whether the shockingly light turnout was due to the tepid reviews, a sudden saturation of Star Wars theatrical offerings, or fans not wanting to see someone other than Harrison Ford playing the scruffy nerf herder, the futures of all franchise films outside of the trilogy concluding The Rise of Skywalker were immediately sent into limbo. You! You liar! As usual, notice how the media skirts around the truth of why Solo bombed. It wasn't tepid reviews or Star Wars oversaturation, it was The Last Jedi. Plain and simple, that movie split the fanbase right down the middle, it ruined the franchise, fans hated that movie, and boycotted Solo in response. This is a perfect example of the media running defense for their corporate Disney overlords. But whatever, let's continue. While those movies may have been put on Hoth-level ice, Kennedy says interest for the Kenobi project in some form remained. But if not a movie, then what? That's when Disney's then-CEO Bob Iger decided to take on Netflix. When Bob Iger very specifically said, we are going to start to shift our priority to making series for Disney Plus and we're launching the streaming service, that really was what shifted our strategy, says Kennedy. We started to look at the opportunity in the streaming space where we could do long form storytelling and we realized there was an opportunity to experiment in that space without the level of scrutiny that happens when you release a feature. You dumb bastard. Ugh. Typical Kathleen Kennedy. What the hell made her think there'd be less scrutiny in a TV show than a movie? We in the Star Wars community are passionate fans. We care about everything. This woman is just completely disconnected from the fandom. That meant creating the Mandalorian. It meant bringing Boba Fett back from the dead. It meant spinning off from animated offerings like The Clone Wars and staging another prequel, this time for Rogue One intelligence officer Cassian Andor. And it meant Ewan McGregor stepping on stage to raucous applause at August 19's D23 convention to officially announce his triumphant return. Excitement was further fueled when it was revealed a month later that Deborah Chow, who had worked on The Mandalorian, would direct the Obi-Wan series, becoming the first woman to helm an entire live-action Star Wars project from start to finish. I don't care. However, as the crew came together to work toward a summer 2020 production start date, Kennedy became concerned with the direction of the scripts. We're looking, ultimately, to make a hopeful, uplifting story, says the studio head, and it's tricky when you're starting with a character in the state that Obi-Wan would be in coming off of Revenge of the Sith. That's a pretty bleak period of time. You can't just wave the magic wand with any writer and arrive at a story that necessarily reflects what you want to feel. Why are you the way that you are? Okay, this is what's wrong with Kennedy Star Wars. They don't come up with a cool Obi-Wan story and then say, Wow, this would be amazing for Star Wars. They say, You know, an Obi-Wan story would be amazing for Star Wars. Let's come up with an Obi-Wan story to make this happen. They do it completely ass backwards. It's what happened with the sequels. They didn't have a story. They had a need for content. But anyway, the article continues, Believing an overhaul was in order, Kennedy temporarily shut down production in January 2020, pushing back the filming start date from August of 20 to January of 21, and hired a new writer, Joby Harold, to take over from Hossein Amini. Alright, we're gonna stop there. I think you get the picture. Kennedy was supposedly the one making the calls on this project, which completely dampens my outlook on the show. You may have seen my video on the Obi-Wan Kenobi trailer the other day. I was excited by the look of the trailer, though I know it is only a trailer, and I was still concerned the show would suck. 
If Kennedy's hands are all over it like this article describes, well, my excitement is pretty tempered. Hello there. Yes! 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 <laughs> Now, I can hear some of you saying, well, the Obi-Wan show isn't the Mandoverse, where Kennedy has no power. Or, you might be thinking, well, the production of Obi-Wan was a few years ago, so maybe she is just a figurehead now. If that's the case, then we need you to reconcile this. This image is from the set of The Mandalorian Season 3, and it's brought up quite an interesting discussion because the costumes look very much like the Sith Troopers from the sequel trilogy. This means that for those of us hoping we'll see a retcon of the sequels, well, this puts a damper on that. The costumes are very similar to the troopers used by Snoke in The Last Jedi. To top it off, there are rumors I'm hearing that The Mandalorian Season 3 is tasked with reconciling the sequels with fans, not erasing them. I'll discuss those rumors another day when there's more concrete information. No need to report that to him until we have something to report. All that said, however, it is worth mentioning that the helmets do share another likeness as well. For the old school extended universe fans, these helmets look an awful lot like the Neo Crusaders, who were Mandalorians, so it's still possible this isn't the end of days. So you're telling me there's a chance. Disney has flirted with controversy far too often. They've chosen sides far too often, and it's biting them in the ass these days. At the beginning of this year, CEO Bob Chapek released a public memo which made it seem as though the company was changing its ways. It sounded as though they were taking a customer-centric approach to business and leaving the politics and the fan-blaming in the rearview mirror. Not long after that memo, noted fan hater Pablo Hidalgo shut the hell up on Twitter, which caused religious scholars to begin a debate about whether or not to canonize this as an official miracle. One thing is for certain, he may still be talking about Star Wars lore, which is his job, but he's no longer making his non-Lucasfilm views public. Oh, thank God. But now, Disney is embroiled in a controversy concerning a law in Florida. I'm not going to go into the specifics of the law because this is not a political channel, and I would ask that all of you in the comment section do all of us the same courtesy and please not talk about the content of the law or your opinion on it. There are other places for that, and if I see someone bring up the content of the bill in any way, it's going to get deleted. You have been warned. That said, I only bring all of this up to illustrate the folly of Disney's ways. It really just might be too late for the company. I think they genuinely tried becoming apolitical under Chapek. I think Chapek did his best to fix this, but he buckled like a chud. And now, nobody is happy with the company. Fans like us are pissed. Employees that are used to getting their way with the company are planning a walkout. And to top it off, the company stock, though it has seen a miniature rebound the past few days, is still in the toilet. <laughs> this was always the danger of keeping divisive figures like Kathleen Kennedy on at the company. People like her, who brazenly discussed their political views in interviews and social media, let their worldview seep into their work like a cancer. We are trying to grow uh, in the workforce a number of women in executive positions and in all positions inside the company and with the movies that we're making and with the protagonists that we're putting in the stories. So I get a huge amount of support with that, but we have 50% of our, our executive team are women. Impressive. Mm -hmm. And six out of eight of the people in my story group are women. Most impressive. And 
I'm sure there's a lot of people that would be surprised that we're making Star Wars movies and the majority of the people involved in the development of those stories are women. Nobody cares. But let me know in the comments what you think. Are Bob Chapek and Disney screwed? Or is there a feasible way out of this mess? And what do you think of the Kathleen Kennedy situation? Is she still the big cheese? Does she have any say over the Mandoverse? And if not, then what is the organizational structure? Leave your non-political thoughts down below and we'll get a discussion going. Thanks for watching me hearties. If you haven't already, your captain is inviting you to subscribe to the channel and become a part of the crew. Life as a space pirate may not be glamorous, but there's always plenty of booty.